Okay, sup you chuckle fucks. It's your boy Dark Raku here with What If Issei Had a Spiral Energy Part uh, 7 Redo. Now, I, I'm only going to say this once and I have no fucking clue in why the audio became so fucking quiet during the whole time I was recording. Okay, I just rewatched this because I couldn't rewatch it yesterday because yesterday I had it to do stuff. And other bullcrap that I didn't really want to do. And so, of course, I'm going to record this. Upload part 7. Part 8. I really wanted to go into part 8. But I guess I can't go into part 8. Because I have to do part 7 redo. Because I don't know what happened there. I just... Oh, for fuck's sake. I don't even remember half the shit that I said on part 7. Because, well, I can't hear what the fuck I said in part 7. Because, well, the audio just fucking cut out. I, I just... Ah, so fucking annoying. I wanted to go to part A because I had an idea on part A because part A will actually be what's it called Issei kind of killing someone and getting suspended somewhat or not suspended, kind of dropping out suspended, someone like that. Part nine will be something else, and then part ten will be a battle. But shit, I can't. I can't deal with fucking shit like this. But yeah, but not the point. Of course, let me just begin with the part seven. Mostly where, where mostly um. So yeah, let me just begin the part seven. So, yes, Issei did hear the whole century song. Mostly, uh, you can remember it until for centuries. Blah blah blah. Not the point. He heard that song. Went into his house. Now, when he gets to his house, he kind of opens the door, goes inside it, and just kind of, uh, well. Unlocks the door because he does have the key to unlock it. Goes inside, kind of goes through his bed and falls asleep. Now, of course, hearing music, he does pack up some things because, well, on Tuesday, he's just going to move up. Just move out straight away. Like, he doesn't care. He goes to his house and just move out. Done. He will even change his name, but not the point. But, of course, it worked well. He goes to sleep hearing uh, his headphones. And, of course, it worked well. Mostly, he is just... Well, waiting until it becomes daylight, but not the point. Because he kind of went around somewhere around like uh, like 12 o'clock, but not the point, to get to his house. He woke up the next day somewhere around like 6 o'clock. His dad already left for work at like 5, while his mom is mostly a like, household woman. So, of course, she just stays at the house. So, of course, Ethan woke up at around 6, just so he can like clean up and do a lot of things. And, of course... This is where, well, he can get an early breakfast in this house, even though he doesn't like it. But when he was going downstairs, he saw his mom at the kitchen. His, well, mostly his household mom. This is where, well, his mom is just like cooking, well, not cooking. She was sitting at the table until she noticed Isi. This is where uh, Isi looks at her with mostly a kind of annoyed look a little bit. And this is where he then realized that, no, he's not sitting here for breakfast or anything. This is where, well. Issei was actually going to the door, opens it, and this is where his mom says, Issei, where are you going? Issei said, oh, I'm just going to go to school early. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. This is where, well, Mika says, Issei, come back. This is where, um, Issei says, bye, mom. This is where Issei fucking walks away, speed walking away from that house. This is where, well, Mika sighs because she doesn't know why Issei is avoiding her. Now, of course, that whole kind of staying with, uh, was it called, Morahama for about three days, Considered to be four days and considered to be more days than normal. She doesn't know what's really happening to her son. This is where she's kind of worried about him. But this is where, well, Issei kind of gets towards what's it called, well, a cafe. A cafe that he has actually been here on, was it called Friday? He just ordered a coffee, a donut, like two donuts. It wouldn't be a sprinkle white donut and the other one being a, a sprinkle of pink donut, but not the point. He's right now on YouTube. Well, not even YouTube. He's right now, well, he is on YouTube and right now watching videos and edits and other shit, but not the point. But this is where, well, he is right now just kind of drinking his coffee, eating the donut, and of course, the where, well, someone walks into the cafe. A girl with kind of having blondish and kind of orangey hair, and of course, having greenish eyes. And this is where, well, she's wearing the school female, uh, cool uniform. This is where, well, when Issei looked up. Of course, where Issei's wearing the male kind of uniform, even though he didn't wear it on Friday, because Friday, he was just ditching, he didn't really care, he was wearing casual clothes, but yeah. Now, of course, the female actually noticed Issei, 
like, well, unlike the last time, she was interrupted mostly from staring at him because he's actually quite cute half the time. Because you see here, Issei did get a haircut that kind of makes him look like Sanjay and Wu. And of course, well, he also has, well, mostly his brownish golden eyes. Kind of does show a lot of emotions. No, well, not much emotions, but still some emotions that are quite interesting for her. This is where, well, Issei noticed her and of course decided to try to ignore her. And this is where he's drinking his coffee. This is where, well, <clears throat> she actually sat right in front of him and just looked at him. Now, of course, she did notice the three necklaces that Issei has. Because, yes, anywhere that Issei goes, he will have three necklaces. One in the middle will be the drill necklace that was actually given to him by his, like, uh, well, not great-grandfather. Mostly his, uh, mostly Shinjiro Sano's grandfather. Yes, even Mike is and Emma's grandfather. Yes, he gave that necklace towards Issei to kind of, well, remember by someone. Also... Mostly the other two necklaces is one necklace that's actually Shinjiro's own necklace that he actually always had with him. Even when he actually created the black dragon. Because the necklace is literally a black dragon with a red ruby gem holding onto it. Now, it's like this one but a little bit different. It's kind of like clenching onto it with like its hands. Now, the black dragon is kind of like a western dragon but not the point. Now, of course, this is where, well, he is also wearing a green kind of necklace that's actually like a green dragon with two heads. Well, not entirely two heads, one head, but of course, the, it's like a western dragon, well, the green dragon, holding onto an embro. Yes, a, literally an embro, while the green dragon is a jade kind of like, mostly material made out of, but yeah. This necklace was given to him by his older sister figure called Emma. Emma Sano Kurg yeah, Kurogawa. Yeah, she's basically kind of related to well, as, as Azana's Kurogawa, not the point. But yeah, the drill necklace was given to him by his grandfather because it was actually the only necklace that was actually overreacting with Issei. When, what's it called, his, well, mostly Shinjiro's grandfather tries to give it to Shinjiro, but Shinjiro didn't really want it because he already had his own necklace and he really didn't really like the drill kind of style. Of course, she had to give it to Emma, but Emma refuses because she didn't like it neither. And tried to give it to Mikey, but Mikey was too busy and mostly dealing with his uh, own friends and other things, so he really didn't like the drill. But when it was given to Issei, even though Issei wasn't entirely a part of his family, the drill kind of glue, uh, mostly glowed this kind of brightish, greenish color, which made in well made Issei really like this necklace a lot. This is where, well, Issei always wear these three necklaces because it reminds him, well, it reminds him of his actual, well, not actual grandfather, but his grandfather figure, his brother figure, and his sister figure. So, of course, he has these three necklaces to remember the Sano family. And, of course, he doesn't have anything from Mikey, but he does have a picture, mostly in the dragon necklace, that ruby kind of thing can actually open to show a picture of mostly him, Izana, and even what's it called, Mikey, but yeah. But yeah, even having a Shinjiro picture inside it. But I will only explain why this will be important because in part 8, it's kind of important, but not the point. Now, of course, he has those uh, mostly pictures inside of what she can open any time just to see his family. Of course, in the green necklace, it actually has him and which was the emerald can actually be open. And of course, inside it, it actually has a picture of him and his older sister figure being Enma, Enma Sano. Kuro and of course him, of course when they were younger, but yeah. Emma's kind of like putting her hand, well mostly her hand in front of her, kind of putting like into a peace sign, while Issei's doing the exact same. Of course, Draken's actually behind them, but yeah. Now of course, Draken is the much taller one out of the picture, but yeah. <laughs> of course, he was a little bit cut, so like his hair was kind of cut out of the frame because he was a little bit too tall, but yeah. Which made only Emma and Issei kind of giggle at the whole picture. And Draco was just crumbling. But yeah, at that time. Because it kind of made him kind of look like if he was bald from the top. But yeah. But not the point. Now, of course, they were, well, of course, Issei has that picture. And of course, the drill can't really be open, actually. It can't really be open. So he can't put a picture of, like, his grandfather. But he does have a picture of mostly him and his grandfather. Mostly grandfather figure. So yeah. Now, he does actually have also a picture of, like, other people, mostly that he ever met, like, Joker, even, uh, what's it called, Benji, or even, like, Shinrai, 
Arthur and even Maki. He has pictures like those, which he actually has them mostly on his wallet just so he can remember them. Now, of course, uh, mostly Joker didn't really want us to take a picture. <laughs> well, he did, but of course, it was with Benji because if he if he's going to take a photo, it, he's going to bring someone with him. So, of course, Benji was the other person. Now, Benji was pissed and annoyed with that shit. He did not want to take a photo ever again. But yeah, also Conroy was there in that whole picture. But yeah. But of course, I only mention that because, well, I'm only mentioning these pictures because it will be kind of important in part eight, but not the point. Foreshadowing. I am for fucking shadowing, but not the fucking point. Of course, we were, well, mostly the girl actually noticed his necklace. She actually liked the green necklace. Like, it's quite beautiful. Like, whoever decided to pick out that necklace for Issei was actually quite fashionable. While, well, the other two necklaces are quite cool and interesting. Mostly the drill necklace. Uh, of course, it seems to be quite ancient and does show a little bit of power, but not much to anyone can actually see it from naked eye. And can really sense the energy, because if they don't know what this energy is, it's not considered magic. So yeah, it's really not magic. But of course, this is where the kind of dragon necklace is similar to that of the green ember necklace, but of course, the green jade ember necklace. But of course, it has a little bit more of an older detail to it. Than the other one. The other one seems to be a little bit newer. But of course, the word. Well, she noticed those three necklaces that Issei has always around him. Mostly the black dragon necklace is always to like the uh, right side of him, while the green necklace is in the left side, kind of near his heart. And of course, the drill necklace is in the middle of between both of them. But yeah. What's the word? Well, Issei looks up to see mostly her just staring at him. With mostly a curious look, of course, she seems to be quite innocent, like very innocent. Uh, of course, she's kind of innocent, like what's it called, Ozzy Argento. Now, I should mention one thing Ozzy Argento, uh, uh, well, she's gonna come later into the series, but she's really not with the Fallen. She is kind of, well, she is with the Fallen, but she's not with, like, what's it called, Rainer or any of the others. I really, I almost forgot about the whole thing about Ozzy Argento, but I'll explain later where she's going to be at. But, Mostly, mostly she's kind of that kind of adorable like that, which Issei kind of gets, well, mostly had a little tint of blush on his face, but he managed to control it, where he kind of just still looks kind of stoic, but of course it worked well. She also kind of looks way too curious at him, which actually scares him because he's a little bit par uh, paranoid because he's hearing the song breaking down, but yeah, made by Paran, uh, well, not par Paranoid, made by I Prevail. I'm breaking down. Not the point. But yeah, you get the point, right? But of course, Issei is kind of hearing that song. Now, of course, he did put his coffee down. And of course, he tried to put his phone down and looks at her and says, uh, What are you looking at? This is where, well, she kind of just looks away and then looks back at him and says, Oh, nothing. This is where, well, he says, Are you going to order something or are you just going to stare at me? This is where, well, she blushes and says, uh, uh, yeah, uh, mm, yeah. Issei sighs and decides to just finish off his last donut because he ate it before she even came in here. But yeah, he drank his coffee and of course puts his phone down or not phone down. He puts one of his earbuds, uh, earbuds down because yeah, he was actually going to talk to her. Of course, it worked. well, he went to just throw the cup of coffee away until he realized that he put this earbud on the table. This is where when he goes back, uh, he actually sees the girl kind of like putting it into her ear and hearing what song Issei is hearing. So Issei is hearing I'm Breaking, yeah, I'm Breaking Down by I Prevail and also hearing the song uh, Hurricane. Now, if you've never heard, well, not Hurricane, mostly hearing the song called, uh, what's it called? So, of course, hearing the song called Born a Rockstar, I got, the, well, yeah, Born a Rockstar and made by Netflix. So, I got the cash in the bags, tracing, damn it, this station pack, I fucking up the song, yeah. But, of course, there's another point here and there. He's hearing that song, and, of course, he noticed that she actually had it in her ear, which Issei managed to take it away from her quite fast and quick. But, of course, she was actually winding her eyes when mostly Issei did that. Now Issa says, sorry about that, but I can't let you just be hearing my music. It ain't for free. This is where Issa said, but other than that, bye. Issa just waves her off and just walks away. 
This is where, well, Issa can only remember her first name being Lexia, something like that. Her middle name and last name, yeah, he can't really remember. And doesn't really care. Issa just kind of walks away. Which she actually had a little tint of blush. Because, yeah, she actually got caught in hearing his music. But it can't be helped when Issa just hears a lot of interesting songs. And, of course, well, he's also quite interesting himself. She has actually never seen him in that school since she actually kind of uh, enrolled to that school somewhere on Wednesday, the day Issei wasn't there. <clears throat> so, of course, she's only thinking that he's actually a new student also enrolled to that school. But then again, she does see him on mostly Friday, but without the school uniform. Either he went off to kind of go on a vacation and just came back recently on Friday, or... He is a new student that just recently moved, but or yeah, recently moved to Kua, but yeah, just like her and mostly her aunt. Well, somewhat aunt. Mostly it's like her cousin aunt, not really. It is her aunt, but just disguised using a bit of magic, but not the point. But yeah, does it work, mom? Mostly Issei, he kind of gets to school, of course, after a while. Now, he gets there quite early because he just doesn't want to deal with mostly a lot of people being there and other shit. So, of course, Issei just kind of walks into the school. Sees really no one in the school right now. That's where, well, Issei is walking in. Now, Issei has zero magic, so he can't be sensed that easily. So, of course, where, well, Issei is just walking. And, of course, he's about to get to the classroom until someone stopped him. So the person who stopped him was actually a girl with kind of whitish hair and of course having bluish eyes. She says, hey, you. This is where when Issei turns around, Issei quite looks a little bit taller than normal. He was actually 5'7 when he left, but he actually came to be in like 5'8 a little bit because he grew a little bit. Mostly during the time he was kind of training slash mostly being in, what's it called, Tokyo. Uh, yeah, Tokyo Shiba City. Uh, sh uh, Shiba City. But of course, he also looks kind of a little muscular, but not much. Of course, he still wears was it uh, like baggy clothes because he doesn't want to show off his. He's too muscular. But of course, they were, well, mostly he's also his hair is a little bit kind of like dripping down because he has similar to that songs. But this is where well, Issei turns around and says yes. This is where well he remembers her name by just one glance and saying yes, Momo. Momo, he doesn't really remember her, like, last name, but I can't even remember her neither, so I'm just saying, yeah, her name is Momo, but this is where, well, mostly, mostly when Momo sees this kind of person, her face almost becomes almost entirely all red. She, she kind of just stutters down and says, uh, uh, who, who are you? He says, says, huh? Well, I'm a second year in this school. I have been at, well, this is where, well, mostly he says, says I'm a second year in the school, so yeah. This is a white one. Mostly Momo nodded. She's also a second year, but has never seen this person. His brownish hair is a little bit darker than normal also. It actually started becoming black a while ago, but not much. It's still kind of brown, but dark brown, but yeah. But this is where, well, mostly Momo kind of sees this person. And this is where, well, he says it, uh... This is where, well, mostly... Uh, uh, fuck, I forgot that. Momo kind of just thought of this person being actually quite actually good looking. Similar to that with like Sanji and her personality, but mostly Sanji has dark blonde hair. Uh, well, mostly it's like dirty blonde in real terms, but not the point. He does have bluish eyes, but this is where Issei doesn't have bluish eyes. He has kind of goldenish brown eyes, which she only has seen goldenish brown eyes on one other person, that being Issei Hyoto. This is where, well, she's confused. She has never seen this person, and she hasn't seen Issei for, like, at least four days. This is where, well, Issei says, if you don't mind me, I'm going to my classroom. I know no one has actually got in here, but I'm just going to get to my classroom, so I won't be bothered the whole day. This is where, well, mostly, Momo nodded, just dumbly, but this is where she realized she has to ask for this person's name. She then kind of says, wait, can I ask you for your name? Issei says, yeah, sure. But I thought you would remember my name already. Aren't you part of the student council? That's where Momo seems embarrassed because if this person actually has been here for a while and she has never noticed him, she is going to act kind of, she's going to feel dumb. That's where oh, Issei said, fine, the name's Issei. Issei Sano Kuragawa. That's where Issei said his last name. Now, of course, he is not going to take that Hyoto name. He's going to change it anyway, so it's really 
Mm. It's kind of pointless for him to say his last name when he's already going to change in a couple of days. So, yeah, he's going to change it to Sonic Korogawa. This is where, well, mostly Momo seems a little bit dumbfounded. This is easy, but mostly his last name is a little bit change. This is where, well, she just seems so dumbfounded after, uh, she's shocked and dumbfounded after hearing Issei's name. This is where, well, he says his first name and then his last name actually is considered with two different last names. And this is where, well, mostly she just looked at him dumbfounded, which Issei just ignored it entirely and just walking away. He does put back his earbud and starts just kind of walking away. He's hearing what's it called. <clears throat> He's still hearing the song, Born at a Rockstar. Cash in, the, cash in the bag, tra uh, station on track. Fuck, I can't remember all the lyrics, but yeah, you get the point. But he's just walking away, and of course, the word, well, Momo is just dumbfounded. This word, well, she was there, s just standing still for like a good, like a couple of minutes, until someone tapped her shoulder, and it was none other than a girl with reddish hair and kind of reddish eyes. Kind of like reddish orangey, but not the point. But this word, well, mostly, um... She kind of just said, uh, Momo, are you okay? This is where Momo slaps out and says, uh, Toma. Yeah, Toma, I think that's her name. Tomara? To I think it's Tomara. This is where well, she says, Tomara. This is where well, Tomara says, yes. And this is where Momo says, Have you seen Issei Hyoro by any chance? This is where Tomara says, uh, you mean the perverts? No, I haven't. Okay. This is where well, Momo just walks away. And this is where Tomara says, what do you mean anyway? This is where uh, uh, Momo says, no, nothing, nothing at all. She is just dumbfounded. Mostly Momo is dumbfounded. And actually, she she actually developed a little bit of a crush on Issei because Issei looks completely different. His look just makes him look quite badass. And of course, at the same time, kind of giving him like a vibe of being somewhat of a punk. Like, not a punk entirely, but mostly kind of giving the vibe of like him being like some kind of like, like in a gang or something. Which, she is kind of confused in why she got that vibe, but she just doesn't care. Of course, the necklaces that Issei has also give them to look like mostly someone that shouldn't be messed with too much. But yeah. Of course, having like necklaces and jewelry isn't really... Well, it doesn't really matter. It's just... Uh, what's it called? It just wasn't called... Like, not really, it doesn't really matter in the school uniform, it's really, you, your mostly necklaces and jewelry and like mostly rings aren't going to be taken away. They're really not, I mean, it's just style. Pretty much, it's the only thing that you can't really wear is like, not the school uniform, so yeah. So of course, like if you bring a necklace, jewelry or whatever, that's your care. If it gets lost, that's on you, not the school, but yeah. This is where, well... Issei gets to class, but he sits down on his, like, table and falls asleep. Which, he puts, like, a jacket hood over him, mostly the coat that he's actually wearing, and doesn't care. But, yeah. But, of course, he falls asleep and doesn't care too much. Well, not really put the hood on him, mostly just puts his face onto his, like, elbows, but, yeah, and doesn't care too much. This worked well, like, 30 minutes pass, and mostly everyone is getting to class. Every single person. No one actually noticed Issei. They all think that it's just, like, some person falling asleep, but, yeah. This worked well. Uh, Matsuda sits mostly in front of Morohama. Morohama sits in front of Issei and there. And there's really no one sitting behind Issei. Well, yeah, not really entirely. Well, mostly someone does sit behind Issei. There was actually three more, like, tables behind Issei. Well, not three more. Mostly there was one table behind Issei. And then two others behind mostly, like, Estef and even, what's it called, Junko. Well, yeah. And even Merlia, but not the point. Which Merlia is kind of... Sitting right in front of Esther, but not the point. But of course, well, well, the teacher noticed that there was three other new students. That being, well, mostly one that just recently came on Tuesday. When, e well, not Tuesday, Wednesday, when Issei was gone. And of course, the other two kind of came around Friday, but yeah. Now, the girl that's actually behind Issei is none other than Lexia. The same girl that Issei has actually seen in the cafe. For only like two times incident, but yeah. Now, of course, we were, well... The other two are actually two new students. One kind of ha has kind of greenish hair and kind of like these glasses with kind of goldenish eyes. Somewhat, well, my goldenish eyes are kind of green also. Now, of course, well, well, not green. So yeah, she kind of has yellow eyes, 
kind of hazelish. Now, of course, the other girl that sits beside her is actually a girl with kind of like longish blackish hair, reddish kind of ruby eyes, and of course, they look to be scarlet, but not the point. Probably the same color of blood, but not the point. But of course, they wear, well, she wears the school uniform. She's a little bit more paler than the other girl. The other girl uh, who has green hair does have what's it called, like tannish skin, but yeah. Now, of course, they wear, well, those two girls are going to be introduced later, but not the point. Now, of course, if you did hear mostly in the last kind of part, mostly part seven, because this is the read to, but if you have heard, I read the added two characters, if you manage to hear. I don't know why that cut kind of got cut out, or it was just lowered down to the fact that you can't hear them, or hear me, but that's going to be a problem. I hope none of the other recordings I do does that, because that that's going to be annoying as hell, but yeah. But yeah. But we go into mostly, uh, well, mostly the teacher calling on the names for every person, like Matsuda, Murahama, uh, Estef, uh, what's it called, Moriyama, Catherine, Aika, uh, uh, yeah, Mari, and of course, like, what's it called, Junko, then even uh, Lexia and other people. But this is where, well, the teacher was about to, like, skip Issei. He did call out Issei's name, but of course says, oh, he's not here, great. Well, time to mark. This is where Issei wakes up in an instant and says, Hold up, fucking teach. He throws a pencil to stab into the wall because Issei was quite annoyed with the teacher literally almost forgetting him. And this is where Issei says, Wait the fuck a minute, Dazzle. This is where the teacher turns around and sees, well, mostly a handsome young man. This is where, well, it's none other than Issei. And this is where Issei is kind of pissed and annoyed. This is where, well, everyone was confused, but most of the girls are blushing. Now, of course... Aika already knows who exactly this person is. It's none other than Issei. Even what's it called Moria, uh, Moriyama and Catherine. Now, of course, they're blushing because Issei does look quite good. He wasn't shown too well in the recording, mostly thanks to Aika because she was a little bit shaking. And she wasn't trying to fully record him, but yeah. But of course, other... She, they actually saw a bunch of other random people. They also saw, uh, what's it called? Azana and even Mikey, which they also thought it was kind of cool seeing those two, but yeah. But of course, when they see Issei now close up, he looks quite different. He looks quite good and amazing. This is where, well, mostly some of the girls are blushing also because they've never seen this cute boy around. But of course, he's sitting in the perverted kind of like seat. Also, if you heard something fall down, that was me an accident. Also, if you do hear like shaking, that's me just holding onto a knife, but yeah. But that's not the point here or there. But of course, mostly Issei, he is, well, mostly people are just confused and why this like, Cute, amazing boy is sitting down on the perverted seat. Well, per, yeah, pervert's kind of like chair. But of course, no one really questioned him entirely, but this is where, well, the teacher say, <clears throat> who are you exactly? This is where, well, mostly the girl with blondish hair also noticed Issei. Even though in back of his head, she actually has noticed him because, well, she did kind of stare at him before he left the cafe. And then the other two girls who actually knew were confusing who exactly this person is. But the girl with kind of reddish hair, she was interesting. Well, not reddish hair, mostly blackish hair and kind of reddish eyes. She was interested in the fact that Issa was very easily able to throw that pencil and, of course, stab into the wall. Which, mostly, she was actually interested in mostly Issa's kind of style of fighting. This is where, well, the other person with greenish hair, she was interested in also. Mostly the pinpoint accuracy that Issa did is pretty good. This is where the teacher said... <clears throat> Who exactly are you? Issei says, oh, that's easy. Well, you are about to mark me absent, so I'm not trying to get what's called my parents to wonder why the fuck I was absent again. But not the point. Issei says, the name's Issei Sano Kuragawa. This is where, well, mostly Issei said, also known as Issei Hiyoda, but that's not the fucking point here or there. This is where, well, everyone was shocked to hear Issei's last names because they try to remember those last names, but some people actually do remember. But mostly those quiet kids that actually kind of don't want to deal with any of that. Mostly they actually are shocked because mostly those quiet kids actually know those names. They've been online for a while and have kind of came across like Tokyo, Shiba City, about two kind of strong gang leaders who one is named Manjo, uh, Manjo, yeah, Manjo, uh, yeah, Manjaro. <sighs> Let me say it again. Ma yeah, Manjaro Sano, and of course, also known as Mikey the Invincible, and of course, the other person's name is Zana Karagawa. Now, of course, he's part of the game called Tanjo, but yeah. But this is where, well, the quiet kids aren't going to really say anything because those names are quite infamous and quite dangerous most of the time. And Issei having them, meaning that he's probably a part of that family. But probably 
also known as probably the Green Dragon. The Green Dragon, um, or mostly the Slumbering Green Dragon, who is also pretty much strong, was mostly strong about like three years ago, but they were disbanded. Now, of course, they were, well, they noticed the necklace that Issei has on his, like, what's it called, chest, which mostly those quiet kids are now kind of praying to God that this is not Issei, the same Issei that kind of took out mostly quite infamous uh, people in, what's it called, Tokyo, uh, not Tokyo, Revenge, Tokyo, Shiba City, but yeah. Now, not the point here or there, but this is where, well, the teacher says, so, Hyoto, why did your names change, or what are those names anyway? He says, those are my new last names. You see here, I'm going to be changing those, uh, well, changing Hyoto to that last name. Not the point and reason why I need to explain any of that to you. But if you must know, it's because they are basically my brother's names. Now, not the point. Mark me right now fucking, well, was a present here. Because I actually was the only one here that was earlier than everyone out here. This is where all the teachers scoffs and says, fine. But, can I ask you, what was the reason for your absence in the last week? He says, what do you mean? That's what, well, he just says, I mean, like, why weren't you here on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, almost the entire week? He says, family problems, don't need to fucking explain it to you, so, I don't know. Mo uh, well, what's the call? <laughs> you, well, mostly he says, well, don't need to explain it to you, bastard. All you gotta know is that was family problems. I don't need to explain any to you. Well, yeah, anything to you, so you can go fuck off my business. That's where he says that. Without a care in the war, he literally doesn't care about cussing or any of that shit. This is where, well, everyone is dumbfounded at Issei's attitude. Issei's attitude really changed. It, instead of being a pervert who will not talk back to the teacher, he became a 180 kind of badass who doesn't give a damn about anyone. But yeah. The teacher sighs and says, You know what, kid? I would send you to the office, but instead I'm gonna do a better punishment. You see those three new students behind you. Issei turns around and sees none other than Lexia can just where he says, ah fuck. This is where he also knows the reddish hair, well mostly not reddish hair, reddish eye girl and even the yellowish eye girl with greenish hair, but this is where well, you see those three new students. I want you to take well mostly take them around the school and actually show them around. Because they still don't know too much about the school, so I will give you that as an assignment punishment. Issei looks at the teacher with a very murderous look. The teacher almost flinches from the murderous look that Issei sent him. This is where Issei said, fine, I'll do it. But you gotta put me fucking present first. Because I'm not getting fucking put tardy again or absent. The teacher scoffs and says, fine, let me do it right now. This is where the teacher does it. And this is where Issei says, okay. We have a deal. This is where, well, Issei is kind of still annoyed, pissed, but this is where, well, the teacher just goes back to teaching, and Issei kind of goes back to sitting down. Now, this is where Issei is still hearing music, like, he's not really paying fully attention to the teacher, but yeah, he just doesn't care. This is where, well, when class ended after a while, mostly, the teacher was kind of going on, like, you can't be this me, uh, this me, uh, the, the bell does not dismiss you, I do. The people were kind of groaning and mostly pain because they want to go next to class because they were bored out of their mind out here. Mostly, Motohawa gets up and walks out. The teacher like looks back towards mostly the board and start writing again. Motohawa didn't really care about this class too much because it's not that important, but whatever. He can do some research by himself. This is what, well, Issei gets up also and starts fucking leaving. <laughs> this is what, well, the girls kind of notice this. The, mostly the girls are actually sitting. And mostly staring at Issei. Most of the time, they know that Mohamed just gets up and walk out. But this is where, well, Issei does the same. Issei just doesn't give a damn. He's right beside Mohamed and they're both walking out. And this is where, well, mostly uh, SFRA kind of gets up, walks out also. Junko does the same. And, of course, Aika does the same. This is where, well, some girls like Moriyama and Catherine, they will cause too much of a distraction if they walk up and get away. Because, well, people will kind of look at them like, where the fuck are you guys going? This is where Masuda is just grumbling because, well, he is right now just wanting to go peep them some girls. Of course, he actually wants to question Issei more on why his look is different and why Issei's attitude is a little bit more different also. But of course, when he turns back around, he sees no Motohama, no Issei, no Estef, no Junko, 
uh, what's it called, Maria kind of just stayed there because she didn't really want to go to the next class neither. But this is where, well, uh, Alexia did get up. She she already kind of walked out, even though uh, she knows that's quite probably a bad thing to do that. But of course, she wanted to follow Issei a little bit more because she's actually supposed to be brought around the whole school. Even the other two kind of got up and left because, well, they see Motohama do this, uh, do this a couple times when they were there kind of in the beginning. But yeah, or they just came recently. But this is where, well, Issei and Motohama are just talking. This is where, well, Issei does have his earbud, one of them, out. And this is where, well, Motohama says, so what happened to the new, what happened to the old you, I should say? Issei says, the old me? What are you talking about? This is the old me. Before any perverted shit happened. Yeah, that's where, well, Murahama says, hmm, I see. So, this is the old you slash new you, I'm just going to say. He says, yeah, you can say that. Besides, you know, Murahama, you should probably get a haircut. Oh, no, you have way too much hair. Murahama scoffs and says, yeah, that is true. I should get a haircut. This hair gets annoying when I'm actually doing engineering stuff or even, like, typing on my computer. This is what, well, you say chuckles and says, exactly. Well... I don't know about you, but I'm thinking I'm going to next class. What about the tutorial of those three girls? Issei says, I don't give a damn. The teacher can go fuck off. This is where, well, mostly the Motohama switch up and says, really? He's just going to ignore people's help. Issei says, I've done it before. I ignore anyone's help because I don't care. This is where, well, we'll see. Motohama switch ups at Issei, but this is where, well, Motohama says, eh, whatever. Do whatever. Issei says, yeah, I'm going to be doing whatever. It's mostly back to my old self when I actually didn't care too much. Besides, this literally was me in middle school before anything. So, yeah. But how much just says, yeah, whatever. Also, you're going to have to deal with uh, Matsuda's kind of annoying antics. Oh, yes, I'm going to deal with that. Don't worry, I'll punch him right in the face, clock him the fuck out. Just so his bitch ass doesn't annoy me. This is where Motohama says, eh, violence. I will only say violence is a key, but pretty much I don't care. He says it's exactly. Now, on to next class. This is where, well, before Issei was about to walk fully back to his, like, next class. This is where, well, mostly he actually got stopped by, well, none no, of the Lexi and Lexi said, uh, Issei, could This is where, well, Issei turns around and sees Lexia and the other two. And this is where Issei says, fuck. This is where, well, Issei says, Fuck in his, mostly under his breath, but they managed to hear it. And this is where, well, mostly Lexia kind of gets unnerved with him. And this is where, well, he says, right, I gotta show you around the school. Don't complain to me about anything. Do not question about if I have any knowledge about stuff. And no, 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 I actually don't care too much. This is where, well, mostly he says, this is where, well, follow me and just hope this can get over and quite fast. What's your next class? Is Issei kind of just ask them. Alexia says, my next class is art. This is where, well, Issei says, art. Interesting. Yeah, I can show you where that class is at. And, well, mostly, I think you already know because you've been here on since Wednesday. But I guess you want to learn about the other things instead of your normal classes. This is where, well, they kind of nodded. This is where, well, mostly, you say size, but the size, they just bring them around. But, yeah. Issei explains about the different classes, like English, science, whatever, bullcrap. Issei is literally acting like similar to that of a teacher, but of course at the same time not really bothering to a answer any questions, what they ask. Issei brings him to the kendo class, the swimming, cla uh, swimming club class. Yeah, he brings him to almost all the like clubs or whatever. Mostly the female clubs, the male clubs, or whatever, bullcrap else. <clears throat> And this is where, well, mostly Lexia asked, and what's that one building all the way over there? They were outside, and this is where he used to say, what building? This is where, well, <clears throat> you say, notice the old school building? And this is where, well, you say, say, that's, uh, let's see, what was that classroom again? Oh, uh, yeah, that was the occult research club. A bunch of people that believe in the supernatural bullcrap. I don't believe in that crap, because, well, first of all, why would I believe in something that I don't really care about? God is not real to me because if he was real, I want him to fight me in the fist fight, but not the point. I'm joking because I don't really believe in him at all. Also, I don't believe in any of the other bull crap like angels, fallen angels, devils, whatever bull crap, blah, 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 blah. I do not believe in any of that shit. For, for God's sakes, don't tell me you people believe in that because I don't believe in it. 
So don't bother me about any of that crap because I don't really believe in any of it. Magic is kind of complete bullshit because, well, why would I want magic when I can literally just punch someone in the face, knocking them out, but whatever. This is what, well, they all sweat drop at Issei, but Issei did kind of now know about their names more now, kind of already remember their names, but not much. He remembers the girl with kind of orangey, kind of blondish hair, Alexia. But this is where, well, he then remembers the greenish hair girl is named Maki Zenin, which actually reminds him of Maki Oze, but not the point. Also, he kind of also realized that the other girl with reddish eyes, blackish hair, her name is none other than Maki, but her last name is not Zenin or nothing. So her name is Maki Horikawa, and this is where, well, he says, says so, you want me to call you Maki H and Maki Z? Done. This is where, well, Issei can just remember them by that. Issei sighs and says, so yeah, pretty much that's all what's in the school. This is where, well, we'll see Maki with the Z kind of says, So, what is your title in the school? The perverted beast or something? I don't remember what it is. I don't really care. I'm not really a pervert. I just wanted to falsely make being a pervert so I don't deal with many people. This is where, well, most easy is, and I don't really want people to bother me, but I already know me coming back like this. People are going to question, make rumors and bullcrap, and I just don't want to deal with that. Oh, such a pain. This is where, well, Market and H says, so how good are you with hand-to-hand -hand combat? Issei said, what? What do you mean? This is where, well, mostly Maki with an H says, I want to know. Are you good with any weapons like knives, swords, guns, or any of that? This is where well, Issei kind of looks at her and kind of just has a little grin and says, Wow, I thought you were going to tell me how do I fucking use magic? Which mostly someone did ask me one time and I fucking just punched them in the face because they were pissing me off when I was walking to the school. Well, not really walking to the school, kind of walking, but mostly they just was annoying me. I was not going to deal with that shit. For a second, I thought I was literally high off my fucking ass because, well, first of all, yes, I do fucking weed. Yes, Issei literally confirmed that. I smoke that shit because I don't want to deal with half the shit. But I didn't smoke it today, so yeah. So that's why you can't see my eyes being completely red. But not the point. I'm happy that you didn't ask me, do you believe in magic or devil, whatever bullcrap next? I'm going to have to deal with people's supernatural bullcrap, which I don't believe it. But yeah. This is where, well, mostly Maku and H kind of nodded and says, But how good are you with a sword and other things? Issa says, I never did try out how to use a sword. I, hmm. Yeah, I never tested it out because the last time I was fighting against someone with a sword, they were trying to literally cut me down and kill me. Of course, luckily, I managed to punch them in the face and clock them the fuck out. This is where Issa is remembering none other than, was it called, um, uh, he says it's remembering none other than Sanzu, who is, well, in terms to be kind of crazy most of the time, but yeah. But yeah, in terms, he's a kind of crazy son of a bitch half the time that was trying to turn Mikey into a dark impulse murderer. But Issei must manage to save his old brother, but not the point. From Sanzu's crazy manipulation bullcrap, but yeah. But does it work? Well, he says, this, yeah, last time I fucking dealt with someone with the sword, it was annoying as fuck. Because he was just swinging the sword and trying to cut me down. Which he managed to cut me one time in the chest, but I managed to punch him in the face. But that's why I don't really touch swords, because that's such a pussy way to fight. He says, said, because, well, he's literally talking about Sansu. Sansu, I don't remember his last name, but does it work? Well, mostly Monkey Nut is saying, what about a knife? Dealing with the knife users are quite annoying because it's a much shorter blade and if they want to go to hand to hand combat I can manage to take the blade out of their hands because some of the people that I fight are a bunch of fucking amateurs. Now don't ask me where I fucking learned how to fight against knives using weapons or any of that bullcrap because I'm not going to really explain and who the hell I learned it from. This is where well, Maki not, it's mostly Maki with an H. She then says gun, this is where she says a gun. I, uh... Well, I've never used it, Issei kind of said, in a very cold and emotionless look. But there's actually a hint in his eye that he might have used one one before. But Maki, with the knee, is kind of confused. This is where, well, she's a little bit curious now. She's actually very curious if Issei has ever used one. This is where, well, Issei says, but that's not the point. When hand-to-hand -hand combat, I'm pretty good at martial arts. 
I have a couple of martial art techniques that mostly I'm based on, but I'm not going to show you because, first of all, those are my martial arts, and I'm not trying to let you people try to copy it. That's why Maku with the Z says, how the hell are we going to copy it? If we see your uh, combat style, how are we going to copy it unless we've seen it multiple times? He just says, you're not the type of people who literally copy it in one sight a glance. This is where Maku with the Z and H kind of looks confused, and this is where he just says, never mind. So you're not you're not those type of people. Fine. This is where Issa goes up to a tree. And this is where well, Issa kind of well does a powerful kick to the side. But this is where well he then says retack one though triple kick. This is where well three other images appears well mostly around the tree. And of course three kind of hit marks dent into the tree appear. This is where well Issa then uh, appears back into his normal spot. And this is where well mostly Issa says there. Did you see what happened? This is where, well, mostly Maku with Z, H, and even, uh, what's it called, uh, Luxia? Kind of just looks at him with a confused look and dumbfounded look at the same time. This is where he says, this. I'm guessing you didn't see what exactly happened. Fine, I'll explain it. That was mostly one of my senseis, uh, well, mostly, yeah, one of my senseis taught me this technique before and I managed to copy in an instant. But of course, I also refined it so I wouldn't kind of fuck it up. But this is none other than a technique that's actually the martial arts is called Re Taekwondo. Re Taekwondo is, well, a martial arts that's quite rare and people that cannot learn it, well, you suck. But not the point, Issa said. We mostly a little chuckle. But this is where, well, Issa said. But the Re Taekwondo is martial arts that's similar to that of like Taekwondo and other shit. But it's more of, how should I say, mostly evolved with legs. Sometimes uh, your fist, but not the point. Now, I'm not teaching you Re-Taekwondo because, well, I don't want to sit there just notice that you people won't be able to learn it. But that technique that I just used is called Triple Kick. It allows me to do three, well, if I can manage to keep up with the speed, I can do three after images to kick someone in the side of the neck, spin them up in the air, and yeah, they're up in the air for a while. But yeah, who really cares? This is where, well, Maku with an H and a Z was surprised, even Lexia, who was not dumbfounded. This is where, well, he says, so that's what it is. This is where, well, he says, other than that, I already show you all around school. I would have to be going and other things because I think I missed like four classes. Oh, look at that. I missed four classes. Who really cares? He says, other than that, bye, see you, and yeah. This is where, well, he says, walks away. This is where, well, mostly all of them just kind of blushes. Mostly even Maku with an H. She has never seen someone so, like, good looking and, of course, pretty also amazing with hands on combat. And, of course, he seems to be also skillful for, with a sword knife and even probably a gun. But this is where, well, she blushes a little bit. Maki is also the same with Maki with a Z. This is where, well, she's also blushing because, well, mostly he didn't look at them like if they were, well, what's it called? He didn't really look at them like if they were a piece of meat because unlike the other guys that they have met in the school, they're quite perverted. Matsuda included. Motohama really didn't look at them that perverted. He just kind of ignored them entirely. While Issei just kind of talked to them like if they were a normal freaking person. Which, yeah, it's the first person that they ever met. Probably also met, uh, was it Ka? Uh, Kiba or even, well, Sanji. But Sanji also kind of does look at them like a piece of meat, which kind of annoys them, but yeah. But not the point. <laughs> Doesn't work well. Issa gets uh, towards, his, towards his classes, but yeah. It's last hour classes, but not the point. But uh, we go into a time skip about, about a week later, but yeah. In those weeks later, he does talk with mostly the three girls, like Esther, uh, what's it called? Esther, Junko, and even Marilyn. But of course, also talk to Maki Z, Maki H, and even what's it called? Uh, what's it called? Well, not really. Uh, Alexia, well not Alexia, we'll see, yeah, Alexia or whatever. He also doesn't really talk to Moriyama or Catherine. Well, he does talk to Catherine sometimes when he's at the store. And actually is meeting up with what's it called Catherine's little brother, but yeah. Which, her little brother is also amazed with Issei's new hairstyle and new look and other things. Now, of course, the parents, mostly the dad, especially says, I give my blessing for both of you. This is where, well, Catherine's face becomes red and even Issei's. This is where, well, mostly uh, Catherine's mother did manage to kind of elbow her father in the stomach and say, ignore him, he's just an idiot. This is where, well, mostly 
uh, what's it called? The little brother of Catherine kind of just says, What's a blessing? This is where it was because he's a little confused with any of that stuff. This is where he used to say, Uh, nothing. No, nothing, nothing. I think your father is just about that religion stuff. So, no, you don't need to know anything about that. He said, kind of just waves off the little kid. This is where Catherine's doing the same, trying to wave off her little brother, but yeah. This is where when both Catherine and Issei just looks at each other, they both blush and look away. But yeah, this is where, well, mostly that's the thing. Now, of course, the well, the whole kind of week was actually going pretty fine. Not needing to deal with that many people. He did, he did have to deal with Kaichu sometimes. Kaichu just questioned in why he is named different than other things. I should also mention that Issei, when he did kind of go home on Tuesday, when on Monday he did go home pretty late, so he didn't need to deal with his parents. But on Tuesday he got home early because he had a text by his brother, uh, brothers like mostly uh, what's it called, Anjo and well, yeah, mostly Mikey and even Azana. About mostly they already managed to clear up the house and other things and have like a couple of rooms for Issei to live in. But yeah, if he wants to bring his stuff away. Which EC was happy. He went into his house, he saw both his parents, and just told them, Well, I'm moving out. See you guys. I'm also changing my last name. Don't worry. You do not need to see me ever again. This is where EC went up to his, uh, almost he got a bunch of stuff when he goes up to the stairs, then went back down and seeing them and just telling them this. This is where, well, both was a call Goro and even Miko just eyes widen in an instant and horrify. This is where EC say, Other than that, bye. EC starts running out the door and just leaving. This is where, well, mostly Mika started crying, bursting into crying. While Goro was just surprised that his son just fucking left him in an instant. Just gone. Just, nah. He hasn't been, well, mostly Goro feels kind of bad because he hasn't seen his son ever since he was 11. He was gone since he was 11. Came back when he was 14-ish. And then spent there for like, I was like, two years. Mostly when he turned 17, but not the point. Two, uh, well, mostly three years, but not the point. He was 17 and now he's moving out again. He doesn't know what's really happened to his son and why his son is changing his last name, Hiro Torsano uh, Kuragawa. But yeah, Issei managed to meet up with his brothers and of course he had more of a fun time with his brothers talking about some things in school or other shit. Now, uh, mostly Mikey is just a little bit, but mostly Azana managed to notice the girls that are in Issei's classroom because mostly Issei got sent a picture about Estef, Junko, and even was a girl. Uh, Mira kind of just talking, but yeah, this is what, well, mostly, uh, it was Junko who took the picture because she wanted to see how easy he would react, because, wait, well, Junko has his phone number, this is where, when Azana kind of saw this, says, who are these three lovely girls, you see, are you telling me that you're dating all three of them, that's where Issei's face becomes all red and says, no, 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 but yeah, but other than that, I'm going to be leaving it off here for kind of part seven, yes, I'm going to be living it off here. This time, I hope the recording doesn't fuck it up because it'd be annoying. But other than that, bye soon, yeah. But, yeah.